everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, this time, hopefully, um, you've watched some of the other videos that's been going up on our YouTube from L, from Sam. Uh, we're, we'll have some more coming soon, hopefully, from uh, some of the other members from my team. Um, it's been super crazy busy. Uh, I actually got some uh, public speaking engagements um, in London and the McLaren headquarters with Halo Orbit uh, and at IT Nation in uh, Orlando. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Hopefully you checked out those videos and let me know if you have any comments about them. Hoping to get some more of those uh, public speaking um, engagements where I have uh, more general topics and, and things like that to talk about. So uh, yeah, looking forward to it. I, I've been owing, I've been meaning to do this video. I, I've owed this video to a friend, to uh, actually Cassie I want a fellow a fellow consultant for one of her clients um, for a while, and I made her a promise that the next video I do would do would be this topic, would be this uh, video. So uh, I've been meaning to get to it, and I've been holding back. Um, I've been uh, not holding back on it, but I've just not have been I haven't had a chance to get around to it. And so, like I've had in my head, like ideas of videos piling up that I've wanted to get to that I keep going like, oh, I can't, I have to do this one video for Cassie first. Um, so this video is going to be about that. And the scenario that we're talking about here is, again, it's going to be Halo PSA. The concept is going to be what happens if we have um, if we have an MSP, and in an MSP we have different levels of service level agreements. Um, those different levels are going to be um, given by contract priority, contract type, uh, or different types of service for different types of clients, where a single client could be signed up for more than one service that's given to them, and they just have different levels of SLA for different um, types of, uh, for different services that, that they're signed up for, uh, for different levels of priority. So um, the question was, how can we easily do this um, with the current recommended way of setting up Halo right now? Um, it's super easy, sort of, in some of the legacy method is because we can set a SLA override per contract and then you just assign the contract to the ticket, assigning the SLA at that point. Uh, but the way uh, we recommend setting up and the, and the modern method of setting up Halo PSA is by using the billing plan combinations and we're not, we are not assigning the contract directly to the ticket for the most part, 90% of the time. And so in that case, we don't really have a situation where we can say, you know, use the override from the contract because the con contract doesn't get applied to the ticket directly. With that being said, uh, we're going to try to provide a mechanism where we can automatically apply the SLA to a ticket based off of the um, category for type of work. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and screen share, and we're going to jump right in to the scenario that we're just going to make up. Um, it may not apply exactly to you, it may need to be tweaked a little bit, but we're going to use what we can uh, in a demo environment to try to recreate or, or duplicate this thing. Um, so if you're talking to me in implementation, we talk about categorization of tickets and why they don't really matter unless we make a reason for them to matter. And so we come in here, we can see that these categories under category value one, these are the ones that are basically out of the box. Um, what I like to do in our implementation is depending on, on your contract and how complicated it is, uh, we like to align the categories to the contracts that are being done. Um, and so, for example, if we have um, if we have a contract type, so let's go back here for a minute and say if we've got uh, down here, we go to contracts, and if we have contract types in here, where contract types would be based off of different services that you're selling, right? This again, this is out of the box. We're just going to make a couple new ones. And so, for example, we may have managed IT services, right? And we also may have um, we can actually choose uh, SLA override at this point, right? It's a reasonable SLA. And then we may have potentially managed security <coughs> services. And so that could be 24 hour SLA, right? Because that's not something that, that could potentially that, that could potentially blow up. So we want to know uh, that we're looking at that 24 um, seven. And we may have some other things too, uh, you know, like VoIP services, right? And in this case, we may have like a, a different SLA that we may be, we may want to build out or whatever. Um, but the key is is that when we go to build this contract, and so if I pull up a customer, 
uh, let's say Terry's chocolate, and we go build a contract here. They already have a few different contract types. We're just going to build a new one. Um, and this was going to say uh, a contract type we're going to choose is manage IT, right? And then we're just going to go ahead and give this a name. I'll just generate a, a random name. I don't really care too much. This is not what I recommend doing normally, but in this case, I'm just going to do it right now. And then if we look down here, we should have an SLA override um, that should override it according to the type that we created. Let's see what happens if I save it. Um, we're just going to make this monthly. We're going to set unlimited hours, right? We want to make that an active contract, no end date, and if status is live. All right, let's go ahead and save this. <clears throat> All right, and then now that we've done that, it doesn't look like it overrode the SLA at this point, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set that for me. And so again, uh, managed IT services are, is gonna use the reasonable SLA at this point. Uh, right, and notice that when it says it's only applicable in a certain contract at ticket level using the contract field, right? So this is not really helpful to us right now, um, but what we are gonna do is, is gonna do something a little bit different. And let's go ahead and build another contract where we're going to say this is this one is for managed IT security service, managed security services, basically. Let's go ahead and generate that. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll do uh, monthly labor, no end date, unlimited hours, status live. This time I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to set this directly to 24 hour. Let's keep going, right? And so the key is, is that if I take managed security services and I go to my tickets, like the 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 goal is that we would is eventually or essentially create billing plan combinations that say if the ticket matches a service from this contract, then it should go, be applied to the contract if that contract exists under the client, right? So for example, and we're going a little bit off tangent here just to understand, just to explain the reasoning behind why I break out the categories this way. But if I go to the billing templates and if I create a essentially master billing template here or a global billing template or something like that, right? I'm going to say in the event category itself, I don't, I don't even care about any of this stuff. I'm just going to say category is partial match. If it says managed security services, then it's going to go to the contract if the contract type of managed security services exists at that point, right? And then we're going to go ahead and build another one for um, managed IT services, which is basically the same thing. We're just going to put that in there and say managed IT services and save this like that. And then finally, everything else is going to get pay as you go. So essentially, we're building out a rule that's going to say everyone's going to get this rule. If they have a contract, it's going to apply that rule and properly map the, the labor to that contract. If they don't have a contract of that type, it's going to get skipped, and it'll be billable at this point. So an example of how this works is if I go to the billing tab under the client, and I go to my billing plan template, I'm just going to apply the global billing template. It's now going to apply both rules applying to each contract because that's what I told it to do, right? Managed security services and IT services. If I go out of this and go to a different client just temporarily, um, this is something that happens sometimes with your, if you're using a custom column profile uh, and you're coming out of nested tabs, it's just annoying, but you can easily get out of that. <clears throat> We're gonna go here and I'm gonna apply the template. And what should happen is it should tell me Nothing. I don't get any of the rules because I don't have any one of those contracts, right? So if I go back here and I just build a contract really fast for that type, for one of those types, or I'll just change an, I'll just change an existing contract from Silver to Manage IT, save that, and close this up. And then we'll go back to the Billing tab here, and I'm just going to reset the template. And now I have the rule for Manage IT going to that contract, right? So this is how the billing template works. And the idea is, is that when a category aligns with this, it'll apply to that contract so that it gets super easy. Now, the thing is, is we don't need the technician to know what the category, what contract that work falls under, right? We don't want to build it out that way. What we do want to do is when we look at the categorization, we want to create category one. It's going to say managed security services. And then here we're going to say something like incident response, or compromised email, right, or something like that. And then if we go back here, and we build another one for managed IT services, and this one's going to say something like, you know, password, or maybe not password, but let's say, you know, pr uh, printer issue, printer broken, right, or something like that, right? Internet down, whatever. 
And so we can continue to build out multiple categories here for managed security services, or we can say like ransomware detected. I can spell that correctly. I think it did. And some words. Yep. And then we can come out here and say like the next one is managed IT services again, right? And this will be something like um, site down or whatever, right? Now the thing is, like, if I come back here and I look at managed, so I've got both of four of these, and I can continue to build out up to three levels. And I don't really care what the bottom ones are, right? Like the technician is going to search for site down. They're going to pick site down. They don't care that it's under managed IT or not. Um, and so if we can align the top level categories with the uh, contract types, then we can use that to then to basically drive our billing to, to minimize the amount of mistakes that are being made because the technician doesn't care what the contract is. They're just picking what the issue is. There is another way of doing this where you basically put the contract level at the bottom, uh, depending if you, if you have a, a higher level of complexity so that the technician may know the issue, may not know what types of contracts are available, but they'll know if they see it. So they, they search for the issue, they expand it, and then the top, the very lower level, the level three, basically indicates, like, is it managed IT, is it managed user, is it remote only, or whatever, and they would just pick the final level that would be ideally obvious to them. The goal is, by the way, I talk about this in, during onboarding with Halo, is that we don't want the technician to have to think too hard about this decision, right? They're looking at it, they're going to pick the first thing that makes sense to them, and if it's not obvious, if it's not, if it overlaps with another option, then it kind of gets in the way, right? This is one of the reasons why categories in general are not useful if you're not strategic about them, because they can exist, uh, four different categories can apply to the same issue. And so which one are they picking, right? If they're, they're picking a different one every time, it's not helpful. The, the, the idea of using reporting for this is not gonna do anything for you if the reporting is coming back with, with wrong data. So we're really, really building our categories to basically align with the service offerings that we offer. Um, keeping it essentially outside of the technician's business per se. They don't care that it's managed IT or managed security. All they care about is that it's printer broken or site down. You also don't have to call it the contract name, right? You can just literally call it IT services or IT or security or whatever. And the same idea applies. So all that being said, let's get to the point of what, what it is we actually want to do here, right? Um, what I'm thinking of doing is we have Every, every We know every contract that exists. Let's go back to the client we're dealing with. We know every contract that exists is aligned with a service type. And we know the different service types basically are aligned with an SLA. And so we also know that the categories align with the service type as well. And so we want to kind of try to um, figure out a way to link the two together. Well, there should be a pretty easy way of doing it because we know we've got basically um let's do this let's start with a ticket let's go to uh we'll do it from here go here create a new ticket and we'll create a new ticket for terry's chocolate we'll do an incident ticket type and we're just going to say test it services ticket all right category is going to be managed it let's say it's site down right all i'm searching for i'm just searching for site down or printer broken or whatever and i'm picking the one that makes sense ignoring the top level i really don't care about what that is we're just going to keep going we, do, we have not linked a contract at all, and we've just basically created this ticket um, with the category Managed IT Services. So we're going to take this ticket, 2315, and we're going to see, like, can we grab the contract SLA number from the ticket number uh, without having that contract linked, right? And so we know that ticket number is select star from faults, where fault ID equals this. We know that we're looking for category two, um, right? And so we've got this, basically. Um, can we essentially split off of that and grab the first part? <clears throat> um, potentially, we can. I don't know if that's a, no, it's not a thing here in SQL. What if we do something like, um, let's look at the contract headers for a second, right? So we've got uh, contract headers, there should be a type somewhere. CH type, right? CH type is probably a lookup field. I think it's 28. Um, let's do this. Uh, join lookup on F code 
on F code equals CH type and FID equals 28. Let's see if I'm right. And then let's just do F value. Yep, look at that. I was right. Although it doesn't look like the contracts that I'm looking for exists here. <clears throat> let's see, hold on one second. What did we do? Oh, it's probably not type. It's probably, I think I did this last time. I made the same mistake. Um, hold on one second. It's something like billing description or something like that. Yeah, CH billing description. And so then we can just pull this out, pull that over like that. Uh, that's not what I wanted. A value. <laughs> what am I doing? There we go. All right, so now we got managed IT services. And so now we know um, the contracts that are available, right? What if we pull the client name? We know the client ID. We know the CH, we, we know the, the CH area is, uh, is the name of the, of the column in the contract header for the client ID. So we're going to say NCH area equals select area int from false, where fault ID equals um, C315, All right? And so now we can come back and say, we've got two, three or four contracts here, All right? And we also know that the category two um, is the value that we're looking for. And so what if we come back and say, and, um, F value, let's see what, what we can do here. Hold on one second. It's gonna pull up a, a trusty chat GPT. All right, so I think the easiest way of doing this would be like this. And uh, we'll pull this up plus, plus that, like, and then we can say select category two from false, where fault ID equals, and then again, two, three, one, five, right? That's the same, same thing here. And so now, uh, what I do from faults where fault equals two three one five. Uh, invalid common name f value. Apparently, I like my typos tonight, although it is technically like two a.m. So, um, it's technically not. It's going to be something like this probably, right? Because it's just f value then the percent after that. Uh. So Mm -hmm. I probably have to go the reverse. Let's see. There we go. All right, and so now we can just pull again everything from here. So now we know like which contract for that client is specifically coming back for that ticket. Right, and so this is everything here about that. There's the F value and so on and so forth. What we want to now figure out is, is the service level agreement anywhere in here? Um, which it should be, technically speaking, right? Like we can go back to our contracts and we know that this contract is linked to the service level agreement of, oh, that's not service level agreements. Let's try it again. Um, what was that, managed IT? or managed I don't remember which one we, we picked. Manage IT, yeah, manage IT. So that's the reasonable SLA. So ID one, yeah, good luck finding one in here. <laughs> uh, let's see. 
let's limit this anyways, contract header dot star. So we're only looking at the contract fields at this point. Um, and let's just search for one and see what happens. Okay, there's 19 ones. Any of them by themselves. Right there, C-H-S-L-A-I-D. Look at that, it's pretty easy. All right, so now we can just pull back C-H-S-L-A-I-D. And the question would be like, what would be the process for getting the SLA changed, technically speaking? Um, we can actually see that by default, it is the reasonable SLA uh, already. So what if I, I'm gonna inspect this and grab the API payload to swap this SLA to 24 hour SLA. And then that should go through, I think I need to set a priority as well. So let's just set it to medium, right? And then at this point, it's gonna post to the ticket payload, the SLA ID is two. It's pretty easy at that point, right? So now, I mean, you can probably already guess where I'm going. We've basically just gathered the ID number of the SLA to use in here. We now have, um, we're joining the lookup to get the, the contract type where the tick where the area is where that client is the same client and the category is basically uh defining which contract we're going to right now i mentioned earlier that we don't necessarily have to map the contract name type the contract types to the um to the name of the category per se right like we can do something a little bit different as well that may be a little easier on the sql query um if we keep this open we'll just open another new one what we can do is we can start building a dynamic custom field where we can say select star from category detail, category detail. And we really would just want to capture the CD category name and the CD type, right? So, uh, sorry, no, we want to capture CD ID and CD category name, CD ID and CD category name, where CD type equals two, which is that category, it's the first category. Right, look familiar. And so now we can say, um, we're gonna grab this and we're gonna go build a custom field at this point. So I can go to custom fields and I can go switch to contracts. And I'm gonna build a custom field here. It's gonna be a single selection or maybe it's a multi-selection actually. This multi-selection is gonna tell me uh, contract category link. And so, covered categories like that. And then we're gonna build a dynamic list. It'll be SQL, loading results from Hilo database. And it's gonna be pretty simple. We just need to specify this as an ID column, and this is the display column. All right, and then at this point, we can go ahead and save this, put it on the details tab, save that. And then what'll allow us to do is if I go look at my contract, which is over somewhere here, apparently not anywhere. Let me go back to this client. If I go look at this contract, we'll just open up the managed IT services. That's the one that we're looking at. I can go ahead and edit this and change, um, contract covered categories to say managed IT services, managed IT services, right? And so now I have these categories as, as covered at this point. If I take that, I can now go back to my SQL, which this still works potentially, right? We haven't really broken this in any way, shape or form. It's still gonna work. What we do wanna do though, is we wanna to try to simplify it. So we wanna again, grab the contract Select star from contract header. This time we want to um, again grab the client ID. So we're going to grab the CH area is equal to this. All right, and so this will bring me back to contracts that we have a problem with or that we want to use. And then we would look for that category field right here, CF contract category link, right? Um, give me one second.
let's see. We're going to Again, just consulting ChatGPT real quick here. All right, and so we can say, um, select star from contract header, where is CH area? Let's do cross apply. So you have contract category link by comma. Uh, too many things there. As let's say covered work, right? Where is each area equals select area and blah, blah, blah. And covered work um, let me think about this for a second. Let's see how this comes out first. Uh, let's put this back in here and pull this out. All right, okay, so it's splitting it up by the categories that we have selected value, right? And covered work dot value equals basically now we would do select category two from false where fault ID equals two three one five and so that should give us the one result returned which would then give us the ability to say um to say this is gonna be uh let's think about this oh yeah c h SLAID, right? And that will give us back the SLAID of one. And so it doesn't matter whether or not we, where we have that. So if we go back to, um, I guess the question becomes like, we can't really have the same category on two different contracts. Like we just need to make sure we, we're not doing that because that would potentially return an issue where both are being returned or two are, or two or more are being returned. So if I go back to managed security services and I edit this and I add in a uh, category of managed IT, uh, and managed security, right? And the other managed security. So saving this, I go back to my report. I would potentially get two results, which would be problematic, right? So if I remove, uh, if I just put this star and I remove this back in here, let's just copy this for a moment. Okay, if I put this back to star and then I pull this out for a second, I should get essentially a cross apply. Well, let's pull out that field of every contract. So even though there's only two contracts, like each one should be split, theoretically speaking. So manage IT services, printer broken, site down, printer broken again for the other contract. Um, this is the security, this is not the security, right? And then this is security for each of the security ones that are broken out. So one, two, three, one, two. So that's how that cross apply works. It basically takes that string split and it basically creates another row for every um, every uh, string found split by that delimiter. And then we would just match that row by saying and covered work dot values equal to, you know, whatever, category two, faults, et cetera. Um, with that being said, what we want to do is say, um, the, the bottom line is you want to take that SLA. Like now that we have the SLA found, so to speak, how do we actually take that and, and do something with it, right? And so it's pretty easy. Um, what we can do is upon the category changing or upon, really upon the ticket edit or upon the, the, uh, the, uh, upon the ticket creation, 
uh, we can make a chain, we can run a run book or an automation that's going to say establish what the SLA is and then update that uh, SLA. So we can do the following. Let's go ahead and go to configuration and we'll go to run books at this point. And we're just going to create a couple methods here. Uh, we'll do it under the Halo PSA uh, integration, which we've already created in the past before, right? So this is why it already exists. Um, we can just go ahead and say update SLA with correct value. At this point, we're going to do this as a post. It's going to go to the ticket endpoint, right? We should have that still open here somewhere. It went to the tickets endpoint, and then the payload is pretty simple. Um, we're just going to grab, grab that and go here. This is tickets with an S. There we go. Body JSON. Let's go ahead and paste that in. Right. And so here we've got ID number 2315, our files we can get rid of. We don't need that. We have our SLA IDs too, right? Priority we can get rid of. We don't need that either. And then everything else we can keep te technically if we want to. Um, response, apply rules. Right. So this will be our payload, we're going to take this, we're going to run instead the ticket ID like that. That's going to basically post that in. And then our SLA ID, we're going to go ahead and replace this with um, found contract. If I can type found contract SLA ID. Now it may not let me save this. I don't know if it's going to, oh, it did. Perfect. All right. So then we want to go ahead and actually find that uh, Determine SLA from ticket category, right? And so the, to do this, we're going to run a report. We're going to hit post, and it's going to be to the report endpoint. And we're going to do a body JSON. If you've watched my other videos doing this, it's basically the same thing where we basic where we use the API to run SQL to determine uh, the result that we want. And then we're going to say load report only. Load report only is equal to true at this point. And then we'll go back and grab our SQL that we're going to run. And we're going to go ahead and take this as follows. Uh, control C. And we're going to go ahead and paste that in like that. Now, for the most part, this should work fine. The only thing um, that we probably want to do Potentially, uh, we can clean up some of this stuff. Probably, let me let's just do this one real quick, right? If I'm going to take this by itself and make it like a sub uh, table, this will probably work, right? I have to do select. Black star from, right? So that does work. And then we can say, um, we really wanted to is, let's say this is, uh, let's say CH. And then we can say, um, in here, we would pass the fault ID itself. So 2315 is the fault ID, like this. As ticket ID, or ticket ID, right, from contract header. And so then we basically have now that. And we can just say where ch. Uh, um, Hold on, we want to take star here. Okay, and then we can say where ch dot value probably is equal to select category two from faults where fault ID is equal to ch dot ticket ID. So we, therefore we're only specifying ticket number one time essentially and we don't have to run through a million places to do it. 
Um, and then we can also say and uh, we can we can we may be able to just join this actually. Let's see, join vaults on um, vault ID equals two three one four uh, ch dot vault ID and then uh, Faults dot. This is I'm not thinking correctly. I gotta go to sleep probably. <laughs> Let's do this again. All right. So uh, faults and faults dot area int equal to ch dot uh, ch area and um, let's see. And the last thing was uh, ch dot value is equal to faults dot category two. Let's see if this works. So this is like a technically simpler version of SQL, assuming it works correctly. Um, data didn't show. Let's pull some of this stuff out. Okay, so here we have that. Because um, that's pulling basically all of the contracts for that client probably, maybe. It's actually pulling for all tickets. Let's let's do something here, just see what's going on. Okay. Yeah, so it's pulling, it's pulling the five contracts and then we can say, um, and, uh, I don't know if it's, let's see how this looks. Close off a minute. Okay, so it should be fine. Uh, we, yeah, okay. Uh, and ch.value equals faults.category2. What if we take this and say where? Hmm. What if we take this and say faults dot fault ID and pull this off? Okay. Category two. No, oh, it's empty. Did I not did, did I not get the right ticket number? Yeah, I didn't get the right ticket number. I wonder why it's not working. <laughs> two three one five. Try this again. Two three one five. Here's a category. All right, and then we can say and false dot category two is equal to ch dot value, right? So that should give us basically. Um, Two results, y2. Uh, let's say we change this to where. Oh, right, because we have two contracts. Duh. I, I did that. <laughs> so we would say the ch dot ch SLA ID, right? And we should see two, both SLA IDs, one and two, because we have two different contracts that are doing it. But the point is, like, this works just fine because we're grabbing um, the ticket number inside of here as part of the contract header result. And so we're linking that to the specific ticket, um, which we are then going to take and say, just to be safe, and ch.ch area is equal to bald stuff uh, area int, if that makes sense. And so we should still get the same two results at this point. So we haven't really broken anything. We And now we can have a very simple Oh, I call it simple, even though it took me a while to figure out the SQL. <laughs> a more or less simpler version of the SQL that we can now just paste into here. Like that. And then we're just going to replace the 2315 with ticket ID, like that. And so we only have it in one place, right? If we have to replace it, it's just one time we're going to replace it. Everything else is staying the same. And then after that, 
Um, that's going to be the SQL that's going to run. And what we are going to do is we're going to go back and fix that that contract, right? The one that's security services. We don't want to have the IT one in there because it's just going to confuse things in a, in a moment. Let's go ahead and save that. All right. So then we're going to come back here and we are going to go to our output and we're going to say our SLA ID. Um, what did I call it? Contract SLA ID or something like that. It's going to be an integer. Just put this in our clipboard for right now. It's going to be response report rows zero and then ch SLA ID. Save, save. All right, and so now if I come back into S to determine SLA by ticket category, I can run this. It's going to ask me to for that 2315 ticket number. And it's going to come back with an ID if I did it correctly. Uh, where are we? Loaded true. Oh, CH SLA ID. What did I do wrong? Oh, salad, duh. Wow, okay. This is SLA ID, not salad. Save that, save that. Try again. Two, three, one, five. Save that. There we go. Now I have my one. All right, so that's going to give me my contract SLA ID. I'm going to go ahead and close this. We'll go back to our previous update SLA. We're going to go make sure our uh, var variable is set correctly here, like that. And we're just going to hit an exclamation mark to make sure that it's excluding pulling in any quotation marks because it's already surrounded in quotation marks. We're going to go ahead and save this. And all we have to do at this point is build our runbook. And that runbook is going to say following your runbook, update SLA per contract category. And so now I go to my flowchart and I'm going to say grab SLA details. Action is going to be determine SLA ticket from ticket, from ticket category. And then upon it knowing what it is, we're going to go ahead and say failed here. And then here we're going to say update ticket. This is going to be action. And here we're just going to say update SLA with correct value. Again, we are going to say updated, or we're going to fail to update. Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's try it again. <laughs> Sometimes my keyboard shortcuts go too fast. All right, and then here we're going to say failed to determine SLA. Can't find SLA, let's say it's nice and easy. All right, failed to update, updated, and we're going to go ahead and save this. The last thing we're going to do is we're just going to tie this trigger to a new ticket being created. Um, that's not what I wanted to press. We're going to go back down. Events, we're going to say upon a new ticket being logged, right? And where the category uh, is not null, basically. Um, we're going to say contains. Right, That should basically do it, more or less, I think. That's going to be one way to say it's got to exist. We'll go ahead and save this, and it should be enabled. We'll go ahead and make a new ticket at this point. Um, so before we showcased if we made a ticket under uh, just a regular a ticket, it made it under the um, res like the, the reasonable SLA. We're going to now make it under security, and so therefore um, it should use the other SLA. And we should be able to see that in the automation that runs. So if I do security and say this is a compromised email, and I'll just go ahead and submit this. All right, so it's a reasonable SLA standard, and upon refresh, it's now 24 SLA low, All right? Uh, impact urgency is still gonna make a difference. If we have that here, we can update and set that. Um, so impact and urgency can drive the priority of the ticket, um, but we can go to our automation, which is over uh, here somewhere. 
we can see the log. First thing we did was we grabbed the 2316 as the ticket number, right? We want to grab the ticket ID at SLA details, which it came back and said SLA should be two. And then it went ahead and posted that SLA to the ticket, which then updated at that point. And we can see the log, grabbed SLA details, updated the ticket, and it was updated. So it's basically it. Um, a couple of different ways we can do it. The key is we can either, um, we can use database lookups to set the value of a field, which we can then use to uh, fire off a ticket rule if you're not comfortable with run books, right? Same same idea. The key is get the SQL, I determine what the SLA should be, populate that somewhere, and then use that to drive the updating of the ticket. Um, I don't normally recommend having a crazy complex setup like this. Again, this is usually for the more mature MSPs that actually have um, you know, their services broken out and different SLAs between them or whatever. Uh, otherwise, like you're putting a lot of a lot of overhead uh, up until this automation. Technically, a lot of overhead is going into maintaining the different SLAs and stuff like that, and it may not necessarily be worth it per se. Um, not that you shouldn't do it. Not that it's bad. It's just that we always want to be cognizant of how much overhead you're putting into the processes that you're designing, and whether or not it's actually making you uh, giving you back that value. Um, anyways, hope this was interesting and helpful. Let me know in the comments below. And now that I've got this video out, I can go back to doing all my other videos uh, that I have on my list, which includes some cool AI things, as well as my uh, continuance of the Halo PSA onboarding, um, which will cover a lot of the things that we talked about here in terms of the categories, billing templates, and stuff like that um, when we get to actually ticketing. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your night.